work, a, a dial indicator is almost a must. The big question is when you open up a catalog and look at dial indicators, they're priced anywhere from around ten dollars to as much as five hundred dollars. And uh, which one do you buy? Well, hopefully uh, we we can uh, shed a little light on that, and we'll show you the difference between the lower end and the higher end, and let you make that decision. What we have here is a fixture that we've set up to hold the dial indicator absolutely rigid and we're going to use the top of this machine vice to measure off of. We're going to use a gauge block which is a piece of metal that's certified to be a certain thickness to check the accuracy of the dial indicator. Before we check the accuracy of the dial indicator we need to check and see what the accuracy of the one inch gauge block is. Uh, you always a question of how accurate is what you're checking accuracy with. So we're going to check it with a zero to one inch mic and it checks exactly one inch. As a double check we're going to use a one to two inch mic. We'll be on the lower end of its scale and see if we get the same reading. And we do. So either these are accurate or all three of them are off by the same amount which I don't think that would be the case. Here we have the lower end of the dial indicators. This one sells for about $12.95. I have seen them as low as $10. To measure the accuracy, we're going to measure off the top of this machine vise. Now we're going to raise the table up on the mill and put about 20 thousandths of preload on the indicator so we're not measuring right at the end of this travel. We're going to raise it up and slide in the one inch gauge block. We're going to line right with the edge of the vise so we're located at the same time, same place every time. We're going to zero the indicator and remove the block and lower it down and you see that it's off about one thousandth in one inch of travel. Now we're going to install the next indicator which is uh, about thirty dollar uh, indicator. And we're going to do it the same way. We're going to raise it up, put about twenty thousandths preload on the indicator. Insert the gauge block, zero the indicator, remove the gauge block, and you'll notice this one's off about a half a thousandth in one inch of travel. Now we're going to go to the third indicator, which is uh, sales for about around a hundred dollars. And this one shows what looks like to me about uh, one to two tenths of a thousand off. If my memory is correct, this one was about four hundred dollars. It's not a dial; it's a digital. It reads to the fifth decimal place. Again, we're gonna put about twenty thousands reload on this one. Six tenths thousandths. Insert the gauge block, zero it, remove the gauge block, and you see it measures exactly one inch. Okay, now that we've measured the accuracy of the indicators, you may think, well, we measured it at one inch of travel, and a lot of measurements will not be at the full range of the dial indicator. We didn't show this, but I also checked it at, with a three quarter of an inch gauge block, a half inch and a quarter of an inch, and the, and the inaccuracy in all the indicators seem to be linear. In other words, if it was off at one thousandths at one inch, it was off about a half a thousandths at a half inch. The first indicator, probably not accurate enough for what we want to do, but it does have its use. So say you want to uh, check run out on your wheels on, on your car, that, that'd be fine. Uh, one thousandths is plenty, plenty close enough for that. Uh, checking the run out on the brake rotor, it'd be fine for that. And there could be other applications that you don't need to be that accurate that this will be fine for. This, the, the second indicator, the $30 one, um, it's, it's pretty close. It's half a thousandth. And again, it was linear when we checked the inaccuracy at, at a quarter and a half and three quarter of an inch. And, you know, it, it, it may be close enough. Um, it's, it's not bad for, for what you spend. The third indicator, again, the inaccuracy was linear. Um, so if you were measuring at, at the at a half an inch, you're only going to be a tenth of a thousandth off. That's not bad. Plus, I've had this indicator for 15 years. It's been used quite a bit. So for it being 15 years old and still within two tenths of one inch, I think that's pretty good.
last indicator, this one, if memory serves me correct, was around $400, and it was very accurate. But you think, well, I want the best. Money's not an issue. I, I really don't recommend that thing. It's, um, it's a little difficult to use. If you're trying to measure base circle run out, say, on the camshaft, or the other ones, you got the hand moving back and forth. You can see where it's going with this thing. You got numbers going up and down. It can be pretty difficult to read, and it's even difficult to grin a cam. It, it's, it, it's it's really hard to hit exactly fifty thousandths when you want to check duration of fifteen cents of that. So I would say, you know, if 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 if, if you can afford it, I would go with the, the eighty to a hundred dollar one. It seemed to be the best bang for the buck.